joined by the winner of the group yesterday, Mr. Niels Feyen. Welcome. Carlito, welcome back. <laughs> yeah, this is a uh, critical match uh, for Marky. Uh, I know Mark really well. He's my, uh, he's been my World Cup full partner. Last two times we played, we got to the quarters and to the semis and uh, we traveled together a lot. Uh, this was the first time I saw him after a year. That's good seeing him. He's doing well. Uh, not yet in this tournament, but <laughs> I hope that's going to change for him this round. He needs a win desperately, and uh, Christina's on 0 out of 4. So if Mark would win this match, it's going to be kind of... It's it's getting to that point where it's going to be between them for... Uh, okay. Number one, sixth and seventh. Bosch. But of course, Mark could go on a tear here. He's got a monster break. I actually told him uh, to take a little bit of speed off because he can hit him so hard it's unbelievable. And he really has to hold back. That's much better. A bit unlucky on the control, but the um, cue ball squatted really nice. So that should give him some good hope for the rest of this set. So a little bit of coaching in Camp Holland. <laughs> Well, he, you know, he's your buddy, and uh, we want to give the Dutch fans a little bit more to watch the next two days, because it's going to be hard for him to qual. Well, he could still, uh, if he wins these three matches, he could still get in the semis. Does he? Does he live in New Zealand still? No, that's Marco. That's Marco Tocher. That's right. I'm getting mistaken. There's that many of you. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're losing touch, pal. I've lost the plot part day five. <laughs> <laughs> You've been in this booth too long. But um, good safety there. Fortunski's been tough all event. He's one of those guys. He's, he's I call them front runners. You know, Fortunski's a guy, if he gets out of the gate and he starts breaking a running a rack, he gets comfortable, you're in a heap of trouble. But if you keep him under the gun fast, then... You know, he's, he's human. We all feel the same emotions. So some of these guys are flying starters, and they love to be in front. And other guys are a little bit more grindy. Mark is having a look at this one if it passes to the corner. What do you think, Carl? Yeah, at first glance, I would say it might sneak in. It's not an easy shot if you're 0-3 on the, on the stats. You gotta slow roll this in the corner. Hold your nerve. Nope, couldn't make it. Play the safe. And not safe enough. Fortunski's got an open shot. Yeah, so Niels, you qualified late last night. Try and tell the people at home how it feels to play in this group format when you've not qualified on day one or two and you keep coming back to grind it out. Well, I explained in the interview uh, earlier on, for me, it, it, it started resembling when I was a youngster and I played some video games on the Amiga and the Commodore and stuff, and you had to like play Donkey Kong or whatever, and you had to beat the big boss to get through to the next level. <laughs> if you lose to him, you got to start over, and that's exactly how this format works. You get all this way, right? You, get, you make it to the final four, you make it to the finals, if you don't win come back tomorrow guys <laughs> so in that sense it's brutal but you know I, w I was loving every minute of it and what people see but what they don't feel is the emotional swings of these sets it's it's unbelievable you could blink with your eyes and be stuck 3-0 without doing much and you could have a roll after the break and be up 3-0 and kind of feel the same way like you, you went into the game same same mental for like uh in the same mental frame of mind and i mean i i believe what i've seen in this event so far is the the roles after the break have been so entertaining that that uh creates a lot of value yeah and the unique thing about this tournament which i think is great is usually at regular pool tournaments if you lose usually you're on your way home at least there you can you know you've always got something to play for that's where it's the semi-finals or just to stay in the event and come back tomorrow yeah true when you play single lim elimination tournaments uh that we have a lot in europe 
if you catch a bad 10 minutes or 15 minutes and uh, you could be out of it and now you're thinking in the hotel room like what did I do wrong should I do something better where maybe you could have actually won the tournament like for instance here you could lose two matches fire back hit your a game Definitely. qualify play even better win the group well I think a good example is Albin he was he had to play Ralph Suke and the loser of that match was on the way home. He won the match, and now today, I mean, he lost last night to yourself, I know that, but today he's back, and he's on a roll. Yeah, he's looking good today. He was looking good yesterday also. Uh, he got to the final. Uh, he's been struggling with his emotional stamina somewhat, his attitude, we've we've discussed that. But he's, uh, he's uh, had it under check uh, today again. Whoa! What are we seeing there? That went in 300 miles an hour, center of the pocket. Look yeah. at this shot, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's one way to kick the ball in. <laughs> Interesting here if he's going to play the eight in the side. I think he will. He's going to. Looks like he's drawing back a hair. No. He is. That's got to slow down. Good speed control there. Those are not the easiest shots on new cloth. You can misjudge those easy. And the cue ball kind of stops. Or you can overdraw it and you're stuck on the 8. So he really hit that crisp. Straight in. And a great opportunity to come out of the gates with 1-0. And Mark is not a stranger to front running. He loves to get that early lead and find his rhythm. He's a rhythm player. He's got a lot of feel. Straight arm as an arrow. And he's on the board. 1-0. Yeah, just to start for Team Holland. But to get back to uh, Albin, he was, uh, of course, he took a big body blow last night losing that final. I gave him a donut. That didn't help much. A zero. That's that's got to hurt after a long day, of course. We've all been there. Uh, but he's firing back strong today. So hats off to him. He deserves a spot in the final group, but it's uh, not about deserving with this format. It's a race to five. You really got to go in and grab it. There's no way around it. You got to go in there and, and claim it. Even with a roll here and there, you gotta you <laughs> you gotta put it away and get to that finish line as fast as you can. Yeah, on day one, he lost in the final to Chris Melling. And, of course, on day two, he nearly went out of the tournament, but he's still here and Mr. Consistent. And he will feature in the semi-finals tonight because I think he's on four out of four today. Back so two, current four. he'll be one back again. And Fortunski's on... Fortunski. He was from day two, correct? Yeah, day two. He um, played phenomenal on day two. Yeah, he started like a rocket. Yeah, he had that classic yeah. match against Kelly Fisher in the semis where he hooked Kelly at 4-4 and she kicked it two rails and run the table to make the final. And he's on his own little mental battle. Yeah, he's been here a few days trying to get uh, back to the semis. Yeah. I, think, I think for Albin's sake, though, if he could win today, he gets a couple of days off and I think that's going to be important. Yeah, you... Uh, you you really need the recovery time. I could feel it tremendously this morning. I was so tired the first few hours when I woke up. I said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying in bed. <laughs> I, I totally imploded and then uh, just let it all out. You know, went for a walk and then slowly uh, build up that energy again because we have to come back out. He's going for the bank. And you know what, girl? The banks on these tables are extremely difficult. We have not seen that many successful banks Explain explain why they're more difficult on the on this table. Well, the cushions are very sh bouncy, so the ball is coming out shorter than you expect. You try to compensate for that by aiming perhaps a little bit different, but that would be Tension, it feels unnatural. It's against your natural banking line, so then you're kind of guessing, uh, and you see that with a lot of players. They're coming short. They're coming long. It's not dialed in yet. 
Oh, that was a big chance. Got away with it, though. Yeah, that was a useful roll, but... Petrunski's back at the table, and I suppose that's all you can ask for. Handy little notch there on the three. Did it help him? Don't think so. I think he can still get through to this. Main thing here is hit it. Does he have the nerve to really slow roll it? Or is he coming all the way back to use that three ball? Kind of the same position where he is now. Three rails. We'll find out in a minute. Going for the three railer. Table's extremely fast. Judged it well. Yeah, very nice shot. Problem with this shot, if he goes to the bottom rail where he's standing and kick from behind, potentially two cushions, bottom rail, side rail, it's hard to get some good Thank separation you. between the balls. So you can't really win with that kick. He's trying to create something that he can win with. So the other option he has is kick under the 9, past the 8, and try to make it perhaps off the side rail. Very aggressive shot. Can give ball in hand. He doesn't know what to do. I think he's going to just hit and hope a little bit here because it's not natural. See, he blasted at it. And Mark got ball in hand. This is a massive chance here. Yeah, I kind of liked your second option under the, underneath the nine ball. Tough shot. Interesting to see if he's going to play the five in the side or if he's just going to draw it back to play the five in the corner. I think that's what I would do here. He's not feeling too great, just he has position, then don't play position, is what a Hall of Famer Buddy Hall used to say. And that's great advice for beginning players. Don't try to be fancy if it's already laying out there. You see, you could have gone off the, off the rails and played for the side. It's there already. He has great shape. Just use what you have. Mark, this is this is unbelievable. Mark, his wrist action is so fast, he can on command hit the ceiling off the break shot. And if we're not talking ceilings like in the arena here, but if we would be in the practice room, and the ceiling would be uh, let's say three me meters above our uh, where we're standing, he can do that on command. He's shown us at the last World Cup of pool there was probably 10, 15 people. So I think Matchroom put a clip on Facebook. They said, "Can you do it?" He blasted right into the into the ceiling. Wow, I've not seen that. So yeah, you should ask uh, Nick. I think he did it. Nick Teal, our main man here. So this is just the exact start. Mark wanted, it's fair to say this is a must-win match. He's in a tricky position and he's kind of battling it out with Christina at the bottom end of the table. And when we come back, Niels, tonight at 6 o'clock, Mark will play Christina on table one. Oh, that's going to be a nice one. Christina is not to be underestimated. She's rock solid. But... Mark is getting off to a good start. You saw Fortunski scratching his head there. Missing that kick. Gave Mark ball in hand. Took full advantage of the situation. And that should make him feel a lot more loose. Yeah, so Mark will break in the third. I'm not sure we'll see a cue ball hit the ceiling, mind. Yeah, they have this this game in Russia, I heard, from uh, Alex Laley, our Moscone captain, who you've worked with, with, of course, last December. In Russia, they have a game. It's 
it's like a, a bar game where you hold your fist against somebody's chest and uh, it's like the hand slap game right right and all they're allowed to do is is pull back their lower arm and punch the other guy in the rib now if you if we would do it it wouldn't hurt much but mark's wrist action is so incredibly quick that he he almost bruised alex's ribs he showed me like if one of his ribs were was was <laughs> bruised and blue. That's, uh, he, he weighs two, maybe f- fifty five kilos, <laughs> but he could do that. Yeah. Yeah. Break. Yeah. Back to the match. Let's see how he's breaking. Let's see if he takes that little bit of speed off, squats it. Yeah, he's. Tr- but you saw that he, on purposely he was holding back his arm a little bit he's got a shot on a one but the three and the eight are laying a little bit funky might have to go for combination if he can pocket this one and get shape on the two yeah that's a nice break that i do like that break shot i thought you were breaking well first two or three days Niels. i mean i know you've you've already said you took a bit of pace off it but i do like that hard break right down the middle yeah that's that's something we grew up with when we were always playing one on the spot winner break uh over the years the formats changed a little bit to nine on the spot cut breaking softer breaks um but it's still my system i can pretty much do that on command that movement uh, nice shot there past the side stay on the inside of the two and uh that break i was controlling it fairly well but i felt i wasn't getting enough easy racks easy starters so i said like i have to try and change something and the, the break wasn't as explosive or controlled but i was getting shots and if you keep doing the same thing and you expect different results that's the definition of insanity as einstein said <laughs> so <laughs> i figured i gotta change something here so yeah so max just walk around the table because he's going to be playing a combo on the shot after this and it's one of the type of shots where you'd like to get a little bit closer to your work. Good point. I was just going to say, like, if he gets a lot of distance on this, it's a tough shot. And you want to try and stay as straight on these balls as you can. Because if you have to cut the three into the eight, we're getting a little bit technical now. The three will have a little bit of spin from the impact of the cue ball. And that will transfer also on eight and it could throw it out of the line see he's oh just like that on command on command he was still fairly straight he was okay he just overcut it a hair maybe he was worried about the position took his eye off the ball maybe the shot clock in the back of his mind sometimes you feel like i have to pull the trigger i don't have enough time and then some things happen yeah, so a small lifeline for the butcher. <laughs> the butcher. Can he chop this ball in? Looks like it. Oh, yeah. he can. Cue ball. Cue ball, yo. What do you do here, Cole? Go all out? You have to. Yeah, I think at this level, you've got to take on a pot. I'm not saying it's an easy pot, but... There's no good safety. Yeah, I suppose it depends how you're feeling, but he seems very attacking. Very good potter. Oof. Needs to hit the seven or run past the seven. Yeah, he's okay there, Niels. Yeah, he's got to kind of do the same thing again. And this one, you, you have to cue it really straight. You can take your eye off this ball easily. Basically, all he has to do is hit it at 12 o'clock. So high in the cue ball, no spin, and try to get back to the center of the table. Oh, he's going the other way. It's a nice shot. Yeah, I think that's a smart shot. I think he must prefer to hit it at that type of speed. Seven kind of wants to go to that right corner, and he took a chance of playing it to the other corner pocket. So a little bit more risky, but he executed it beautifully. Been very impressed with his game since he's been here. Nice cueist, very smooth, good potter of the ball. A lot of lefties are smooth, huh? Left-handed players. Yeah, seems to be that way. 
He's been around for a while on the European circuit. Vertunski took a took home a European ten ball championship. This is uh, we're talking two years back now, so he's still the reigning European ten ball champion. Makes the nine, pulls it back to two one, and we've got a small break. Two and a half minute break, guys. Guaranteed that shot will appear on plenty of highlight reels. Whoa, did he split the wicket? What a beautiful shot that was! What a beautiful execution! Look at this! Oh my god! Sometimes it's best if you get up to the table and just hit the ball. This championship is being played with the new RMS tournament set. Featuring a unique molecular structure, it guarantees razor-sharp precision and unsurpassed longevity. Unquestionably the best pool balls in the world, this set is available in a TV and a value pack version, as well as in the new My RMF Ranger of Ball and Q cases. Now you can bring and play with the best ball set everywhere you go. My RMF, bringing new dimensions to your billiards experience. Welcome back, day five, group five. We have a battle between Poland's Fortunski and Holland's Beisterbosch. Did I say that right, Niels? Yeah, you're getting there. You can <laughs> I'm getting there. You say it correctly. Go on. You say it correctly. Beisterbosch. Mm, I'll settle for the way I'm saying it, I think. Yeah, you need a little work. Mark. Anyway, Mark. Marky. So. <laughs> Marky. No, got that wrong as well. Mark. <laughs> no, it's Mark. All oh, right, okay. Let's call him Marky. <laughs> I just keep calling him Marky because the first time I saw he will, saw him was right. he was 11 Number years old, four. and he came to watch the Europeans in uh, Holland, and he Here stuck around. Mr. I was there with uh, Mr. my wife, and uh, he kept hanging around at the practice table. He was, he was a really cute kid, 11 years old, always had that smile on his face, and now we've played two World Cup of uh, pools together. That's like uh, that's a weird, cool thing. Ooh, got kicked out of the. Uh, out of the path to the corner there. That should give hope for the Dutch fans. I know uh, Gerry Kuik, Michel Drent, Josef, you guys could be watching uh, now. Big shout out to you guys and all the other Dutch uh, pool fans. Got something to watch again. I'm here in the booth and Mark's uh, stepping in for Holland. Can't get any better than that. Niels, is there any value in a bank shot? Is, is that on? Would you think about doing that and try and leave the cue ball on the top rail, or am I... It's not a bad option. Have I lost the plot there? No, it's not a bad option. If the angle's not too sharp, the way I read it, he... Ah, he tried to sneak it behind the eight. 
same thing kind of if you leave that cue ball down there even if you give up a long shot how are you going to get all the way back to the two so it's kind of a two-way shot the one that you said with the bank might have not been totally there for him or he didn't see it extension please extension called by mark we're playing with the shot clock now after day two they switch to shot clock mode which has help the excitement of the event even more I believe what do you do here Call this is tough can he make it in the side he's looking at something I don't think so I hate these kind of shots where you have to roll in like a super hard shot and then play it safe yeah or is he slightly queuing down firing it into the corner and trying to stun back up for the blue too yeah that's what he was doing What's happening here? Is it going to freeze on the end rail? Kind of. That's not bad for Mark, though. That's not bad. Because this one, to get back to the two, you have to put a little bit of spin on it, and that makes the cue ball curve a little bit. And it's even harder to put some spin on it when the cue ball's all the way there by the rail. So the execution value of this shot is very tough slow rolled it in Oof. well I'll tell you what that is a phenomenal shot you know when you said you didn't like the other shot they were the shots I hated <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what I thought and he's yeah. just well he's switching hands now exhibition stuff <laughs> from the butcher oh he's under it because he swapped hands oh, oh my god that's the problem isn't it when you can you play the opposite hand Niels? uh i look about the same as he does <laughs> <laughs> i'm okay swapping hands but if i do it well if i did swap hands you can do what he's just done because you're not in stroke no you have no feel and plus he has to slow roll it but the other option is the bridge and if he's not really good at the bridge it's kind of the same thing he got away with it because Mark cannot bend around it. He has to kick this in. He has to do it with some speed, otherwise the cue ball might follow in. Would you not play it soft and then play the pink in the centre? Or just do that? Or just do this. How did he hit it? So basically here, fall straight on the five. That gives you automatic position on the inside of the six. You can swing it around a few rails and then land straight on the eight. I think that's his best plan because you know what? Those shots in the corner, I messed that up in my first final against uh, David. They can be so deceiving to get all the way back for the nine. Sometimes it's better to just get straight in on them. You have just more control. You don't have to use all those rails. Let's see what Mark's plan is. See here, now he has to make a solid decision because the 8 to the 9, it looks like a no brainer, but you can take a sidestep. Roberto Gomez, he's just about to win another rack on table 2. It's a battle of top of the table. He's losing that match 3 2 to Niyuki Oi. I believe he's going to go three rails here with some high right. Go off the side rail, bottom rail, and then the right side rail. And try to hope, or not try to hope, place the cue ball somewhere by the right side pocket. He's going with draw, two rails. Oh, he's hung. That was a deceiving angle. See how much draw he can put on. It's like he hardly hits the ball. I, th I find that fascinating. That's that's that wrist action that he has. I got to pull the, pull the arm all the way back and get, and deliver it. He's got such great timing on those shots. You need to work on your wrist action, pal. Yeah. <laughs> Let's close that subject quick. Mr. 50 yard line. You can often see these missed. Heart of the pocket. Good shot. Yes, it was. There's our referee, Mr. John Lehman, hails from New York City. New York. And his job is actually a, an actor. 
I believe that would be stage acting by the sound of his voice, the volume of it. <laughs> yeah, he's very um, over the top. Is that the correct way to say it? <laughs> he's a good guy, though. One yes, of the uh, best referees we've got. And that's not an easy job, ladies and gentlemen, wearing that mask all day long. You can hear him breathing uh, now and then, struggling a little bit. And we got to have respect for that, for the referees in uh, these times. So, Niels, what's the plan until Monday, the final group? You'll hit balls every day, or...? I took a uh, full day off today, just uh, was happy to get some fresh air. Uh, gonna do another match after this. And then just chill, and tomorrow I will pick up some nice routines. I'll probably go for a run and a workout practice maybe an hour or two you know keep in touch with the uh with hitting balls and then the day after it's uh, time for like building it really back up and getting ready for that final boost on monday it's kind of weird you know it's like also for like melling and david they're they've been waiting for like even more days and then you have to come back out and do it all in one day yeah, at least um, gotcha. we get to see you in the comms box, though. That's the main thing. <laughs> Help me and Mark, Michael out <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Give you guys a breather. So this what looks like it's tight past the red three. Not saying he has to shoot it, but he did go around and have a look. Decision time. We have to see the overhead to get a clear picture. Hmm. There's nothing really natural out there. It looks from this angle like you can make it. But how are you going to play shape? You have to go... What is he doing? He's going... Is he going to the left of the one, go around the three? Very thin? No. He's drawing it... Oh, he might have just given up a shot. He, he gave it one hell of an effort. Yeah, I mean... He almost got there. Yeah, I mean, he's really lost the one ball there, though. That should be... I presume he's trying to keep it bottom end of the table. And or hit some balls there. The yeah. two or the seven. Huh? Oh, he was hooked. So we... we <laughs> I thought he could make it straight in from, from the angle that we saw. Well, I'm convinced he could as well. That's a, That was very deceiving from our bird's eye view camera. Tell Mark back at the table. We can cut this in the side and try to put a four behind his in front of his name. Attention, please. Something's bothering him there. I think it's the purple five ball that's kind of in the way for him going one reel naturally. To the two. Yeah, he's had to load it up and spin it over there, and it's forced a mistake. Big I'm moments coming up. I'm completely lost with this overhead cam sometimes. I thought he could just make that in the side from what we were seeing. Right? <laughs> Maybe it's the glasses I'm wearing. Real first. I was afraid to call it. <laughs> I might have been wrong again. Ooh. What do you do here? Yeah, that's that's gonna be way tight for the side, right? Yeah. Are you gonna play a caramere on the nine? Or are you gonna play defense? Because the bank's not there, I believe. He's loading it up. I think he's playing for the nine. Oh! Well, that's a great shot there from Fatunski. Draws the cue ball down table, flicks the nine in for a quick rack. He didn't even hit the rail. 
Yeah, that's not an easy shot what he's played. He's made that look very, very easy. And Mark's missed the chance there, Niels. Yeah. We uh, misread the uh, open table. Thought he could just make it in the side, but he was apparently in more trouble than we could see. Had to play a power shot. And that gave Fortunski the chance to fire back. So this is what I mean with these momentum swings and these emotional roller coasters that you face in these short runs. It's already only a race to five. Mark was thinking to go 4-1 up, didn't. And now he's back under pressure and Fortunski's feeling like he's back in the match. So within one or two shots from feeling great, you go to feeling like a pudding. <laughs> To be honest, I've not seen many matches Back where it's six, just been like four, all one-sided. Of course, there's been a few, but, Mr. you know, everyone seems to be getting their fair share of chances, and I suppose you would do with this many matches. So Fortunski gets the break underway in rack number six, and I think this is going to turn out, at first glance, pretty bad. <laughs> I was going to say good, but then... As you can see, the cue ball comes and falls right on top of that eight ball, and this is going to be awkward queuing. He can still make it, but then he's going to have an automatic tough shot on the two, and he's a left-hander, so for him to reach this shot, it's going to feel a little bit awkward, like you say. Great camera angle. <laughs> Made it. Has to let the cue ball loose a little bit here. He's, of course, hoping to not run, run into that three. This is a very tricky shot position-wise. Ideally, you want to go in between the three and four off the side rail. Thanks, please. But I think you're going to run into something sooner or later. It might be the eight, the three... So then what he's looking at is maybe committing committing to draw it into the four on purpose and stop the speed of the cue ball. I think that was a very well executed shot and good thinking on his part. Yeah, and he's been rewarded. He's landed absolutely plumb on this red three in the right center and the eight sat in well, a professional pool player's favourite position, where you can just play a little stop shot for the nine. So, Mark, he had a chance, Neil, to go 4-1 up, and he's about to get tied up at 3-3 here. One good shot here, making sure nothing silly happens. Whoa. And, and has it happened? Can he hold that? I doubt it. I think he has to go three rails or more all the way around the table. That was a little careless. Yeah, I think the great Niels Fyon plays a stun shot out into the middle of the table on that previous shot. Mm. From this angle, it looks like he can still hold it. But no, going three rails around. And I think he just got there. Still has to deliver one more solid good stroke. He has to go to the other side of the table to make the nine in the same pocket as the eight. Got to roll this one in, stay down. This is going pretty fast. He's also feeling it a little bit. Don't blame him. After tho all those days of play, you have matches where it's just not there and it goes quick and then when it does, you're also winning quick. So this nine ball to tie the match up. It wasn't clinical, that finish, but they're there. And we're going to see Gentlemen the end of this match right after this short break. Huh? Three or three. It's three or three. <laughs>
One thing's guaranteed, that shot will appear on plenty of highlight reels. Whoa, did he split the wicket, what a beautiful shot that was. What a beautiful execution. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Sometimes it's best if you get up to the table and just hit the ball. Could not be held until there are no new cases. Well, that's right up there with the heat. No crowd, but who needs them? Just in terms of pure potting ability, it's just one of the best we've ever seen. Oh, my word. Incredible. What a, a power packed partnership it is. the engraving process. Interesting match this one. It's tied at 3 3. Mark Bysterbosch could well have been 4 1 up in this match, and now he's got a little battle going on in his own head. And it's 3 3, and he's yet to win a match on day 5. Yeah, he's really got to dig deep. Come with a good solid break here. That's all he can ask for. Back from himself. Seven. Current score is all tied. Try to execute this Mr. solidly. To break. Don't over amp because the frustration could settle in. Hasn't been very fortunate after the break. There. Oh. There he has, I think. The side pocket is kind of in the way though. If he makes the one in the corner, can he avoid the side? What do you think, Carl? Of scratching in the side pocket. Yeah, it's very close. And even if he can't, is it just it in the point? So at first glance to you people watching at home, you might think this is very easy, but Mark has, you know, you can see right down the angle of this shot. So he's got the best seat in the house. And I think he would have been down by now if it was obvious. So I think, he has problems. It's no problem making the ball, but he has to get to the pink four ball. And if he makes this in the corner, the cue ball wants to go into that side pocket. So he has to do everything he can to avoid that. See, and he couldn't. So he opted for safety. Can't blame him. If it's not there, it's not there. If there's a weakness, Niels, that you can pick one out, what would you say? The weaknesses Mark? if if any of course um potentially sometimes a little bit over aggressive on shot selection but that didn't show there so that showed uh, pretty good judgment he's uh, worked on that also when you play in the big arena uh, and maybe it's only one match single elimination you have to sometimes choose for a little bit more percentage play you learn that over the years you know all about that right call when you come into the scene it's a little bit different he's got a good chance here though Niels, really to play a good safety shot and get control back in this match he wants to get on the hill first that'll take a little bit hot 
bit of heat off him and he's played this Beautiful. well, Niels. Beautifully done. I think all Fortunski has really here is a one reel kick off the side rail or two rails bottom rail and then the right side rail to make contact if he hits that one with a medium speed Attention, please. some good things could happen the one could hit the seven and stay there or the cue ball could potentially travel towards the seven going one rail from the side rail and trying to hit it you could make it but also bad things could happen. He's going the two real path. See this, the one hits the seven. Got a little bit fortunate with the cue ball. But that route gave him more options for success of a resave. Of course, you have to be a little lucky there, which he has. But you have to hit it to get lucky. Yeah, and I've been watching him when he's kicking at the ball. He does like to... Hit them with a little bit of pace and kind of chances out them, which is fair enough at the end of the day. As, like you said, as long as you hit the ball, things can happen. So Mark, he's under severe pressure now. Yeah, this is no fun, having to shoot this shot after your previous, previous visit at the table was a good save, and now you're really in a tough spot. Can he hit any of this? He's trying to just thin it to the rail. No, he's trying to use that purple five. That's a class shot there. Yeah, I like that shot a lot. Good speed. He's hanging on in there. Easy one rail kick off the bottom. Not saying that's what he's going to play, but he's guaranteed a hit. Yeah, if the ball is kind of like this, Carl, wouldn't you say if it's in the middle of the table and more open, would you play with a little more speed yeah I'd smash it a hundred mile an hour and hope it's my day again Mark has a tough shot if he wants to go for this positions kind of automatic the Cuba will travel back down table for the pink four if he doesn't fancy that shot he could really lock him up behind the six and nine and the way he's queuing I think that's what he's doing just stopping the ball patient one more shot good speed does Fortunski have an opening to that left side rail I don't think so but he has a better view of it than we do yeah I like the way he got the one ball away from the rail as well looking at a two rail kick again bottom rail side rail and what's so tough on a new table is that it's going to slide so much. So it's going for three rails. And oh. you see it's just curving away from the natural angle. What's happening to this pink four? Oh, he's been fortunate here, Niels. He's, you know, at first glance, all the balls are going to be in open play with ball in hand. And now things have just got interesting. Does the pink four pass the six? to the left corner I believe it does well that's not too bad then he still has to land above the 7 which he's done very nicely that could have ended up in a nightmare if you freeze on the 7 now he can go 2 rails with a little bit of low left and swing it back around the middle of the table, back to the middle of the table. Mark's going to be feeling it. It's 3-3. Three, three. He's yet to win on day five. And the win here will put him in a good position. His main goal, well, you just don't want to finish seventh. I think he can draw all the way back to the rail here and then come back out a little bit. Yeah. Good speed once again. 
Just roll this one in. Give yourself a little bit of angle on the 7. And then cross over to the 8. On these shots, now and then, when I really have to slow roll it, I'll ask for the referee to clean the cue ball because it's right on that half ball hit. Oof. Yeah, I was a little bit like you there, Niels. I thought as he as he missed it on the bottom rail, but luckily for Mark and and Niels, he's gone in. Yeah, we're rooting for Mark to score a point here, of course. Sorry to be a little biased to the Polish fans like uh you and Darren were when Kelly was playing the semis. Me? Biased? <laughs> That was good out by Mark. Stay down on this ball. Put yourself on the hill. Ooh, he slam dunked that one. <laughs> Listen, I don't like it when players do that. Me, this, you know, some players now and again they just fire the nine in, don't they? I'm, I'm not about that life. <laughs> I do that too, because I just don't. Ralph is the kind of player. Ralph's okay if he's on the nine and he has these. If he's above the nine, he's got a half ball hit. He'll, he'll still always roll it, and I. I can't pull myself together to put that kind of stroke in a final nine, but that's totally personal. I'd rather make sure I'm not going to get a bad contact, go out of the corner pocket, two rails, and hit it like a man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not saying I'd hit it like Ralph. Ralph, no. without doubt, the, the greatest player I've ever seen at just rolling the ball with he nothing is. on it. He's, he's phenomenal at that. That's from all those years of eight ball where he's a grandmaster at won I think a billion European titles at uh, at eight ball Ralph so he's he's tremendous at those slow roll shots under pressure back to this game Mark, Mark is in a hungry you have to be hungry now to get over that finish line for Tunsky's breaking Mark's got his he's got his teeth in this match now he's almost there eight. and it scores four to three and for Tunsky Fortunski's mindset Mr. is break. break and run, put the pressure right back on Mark. So interesting dynamics here in the last rack or two. Ooh. See, there's so much ebb and flow in these breaks. Yeah, big match this, Niels. Fortunski's... Well, he's only won one match so far himself today. So if Mark can go on and win this, he'll be on the same amount of wins. And he'll be a match behind Fortunski. So it won't be a bad position to be in. How do you like playing the two towards the four and the, th uh, the cue ball behind the three with a lot of spin? No, he played it harder. Not a bad shot. Just creeped out. And Mark's got an open shot, if I'm not mistaken. Good thing for him here. He doesn't have to do much with the cue ball. Cross it over to the other side of the table. Positions automatic. So basically, this is the biggest shot of this rack. If he can make this one, he has shape on the three, no matter what. Attention, please. From the three to the four is pretty automatic. Four to the five is right there. So this is like, for him, like shooting the nine at this level. Yeah, and over on table two, top of the table clash, it's Hill Hill. Gomez has got a simple nine and he will win that match. 5-4 over Niyukioi. Back to table one. Big pot. Where's the cue ball, Niels? Where I think he is hit the that. cue ball? I think he hit that way too hard. I think he should have taken, should have, uh, he, yeah, he should have taken quite a bit off and make sure he stayed on that right side of the table. That's just the adrenaline and the pressure. We've all been there. And it won't be the last time. And I think it's this wrist action you keep talking about. A few of these safety shots seem to have been hit with a bit of venom. <laughs> venom. Not the worst result. No. Fortunski's got a cue over this ball, and I mean the the swings in this match has been very exciting. 
What do you do here? Do you cut this in? Oh, when your cue ball is over the six? What else does he have? I mean... Could you just dump the three onto the four? Is it an option? With the shot clock, yeah. Maybe even, because that would be about a three-quarter ball hit. Could he sneak the cue ball behind the nine at the same time? Mm. Not from this angle. From the other one, he could. He's doing what you're suggesting. And what you're suggesting. Yeah. And he's done it well, Whoa. by the way. That is a strong shot with that cue ball over that six. That's some execution there, people. Mark, is he going to go two rails, bottom rail, short rail? But what can he do? He, The three will be sent up table. He's got to try and get in. He looks he like looks he's going one rail to me. Not bad, but he was always going to be in a heap of trouble on the next shot. Petrunski's just got to be careful he doesn't do something silly and leave the red three over the side, which he hasn't, so that's fine. Just hit the ball, Mark. That's all you can do. You can't go one reel because the black eight ball is blocking his path. He's looking at a two reel kick now, trying to use a parallel system that's called. It's going to get a lot of slide. Just make contact here. You, you have to hope for luck. Don't hit it too hard. You're going to get too much spin. He hit it fairly well. Got away with it. What an exciting wreck we've got here. What can Fortunski do now? Can he just slow roll this again behind the six? I don't think so. He could seriously thin this and just leave it around that middle diamond. Send the cue ball up towards the middle of the table. I don't think he has a whole lot there. He's going for that six ball. Oh, Ooh, brilliant yeah. shot. Very nicely done again. That wasn't easy, that was risky. Here though, Mark can, can control the cue ball a little bit better. With a little bit of draw, you can kill the cue ball where it is now and he's trying to send the three ball to the side rail and down towards the nine. Speed is crucial. Again, it looks like he just overcooked it a hair. But not a bad shot. Nice rack to be watching this. It's had a little bit of everything. Good thing for Marcus, Fortunski cannot hit the right side of the three as we look at it. So he's limited in options. He's going up and down. And there's a purple ball there. Oh, oh wow. wow. Lordy. Mark cannot get around it. He has he has a safety here, though, Carl. He can hit the three on the right side, bank it over two rails. I think that's what I would do in this situation. Two rails. So above the purple five, one over to the other side rail and then land it under the six and the cue ball goes to the bottom rail and back out i think that's a pretty safe shot and you don't have to hit it great to get good results he's going for something else no i think he's playing your shot i think he's just putting a bit of left on it doesn't need much though no but i think he's definitely playing your shot here's one here's two he has played it really well what a wreck. Now Fortunski's again in a lot of trouble. He can get to that side rail. Is he going to play it soft to use the six? No, he has to bend it into an angle because the natural angle is not there. And he's going to hit it with a little bit of speed. Don't freeze on the rail. Oh, my word. That's a little bit biased, that, Niels. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Don't freeze on the rails, Niels Fine shouts. This rack's had everything. Can Mark bite the Bosch? Oh, this has got to be tough. He's got to go either rail first and try to make it. I think he can make it, Carl. What do you think? 
Yeah, I think he can make it. Cue ball is tricky. Let me see. So that's a good shot. It's a chance. Now, how do you play this, Niels? I think I would drag this. A drag stroke is where you actually hit the ball low. And it's going to draw in the beginning, but it doesn't have enough speed on it to come back. It's going to start rolling, but you don't have to slow roll it then. So you hit it with a little more speed and you get the same effect. Doesn't look like he's going to do that. He's going back and forth. Cue Just ball. Avoiding that eight, but the cue good. ball scratched. Oh no. oh, no. Niels, he's on the floor. Head in his hands. Oh. We're going to... Well, I'm not even going to say it because every time I call something, it goes wrong. All I know is... That is such a shame. Speechless in the comms box. Yeah. That's a body blow. Whoa. Yeah, the butcher's fine there. The eight ball flies in the corner, so... Yeah. Well, I think we're going to be going hill, hill. As I said... Fortunski's on one win today. Mark is on zero. So the importance of this last rack is huge. With Mark breaking. So that nine ball takes us to a hill, hill shootout. One rack can really shake this league up. Neil's firing. Well, what a rack. Yeah, to be fair, that rack had everything, didn't it? That's amazing. If there's any consolation, Matt will have the break. But you know what it's like, Neil. Sometimes you make a silly error and get absolute tappings or rollings, as we call it, and... Other times, the world's against you. I think for some reason, Mark has been breaking pretty well. And there's something in the air that tells me that he's just going to get an easy layout here. I don't, it's not to be biased, but it's, this match is just due for that kind of drama. Where we've had it all, and the only thing we haven't seen is an open easy layout. That's the only thing that's missing. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think he's, I think he's going to be left with something where there's a, there's a bit more Mr. drama. Mr. I can just, break just sense it. Hill. Let's see. That's the beauty of nine ball pool. It's 4-4. Four, four. Holland to break. Well, balls are disappearing. Where's the eight ball? Where's the eight ball? Oh, he's potted four <laughs> balls. Oh, man. Niels, he's potted four balls. And the two ball has gone tied. So we've got a little bit of action here. What are you doing, Niels? He's got to play I'm, for the... Yeah, maybe oh. play for the... Man. Um, I think he's got to play for the bank. Could he play for the combination call? Yeah, I think you want to be right close, like near the point of the, no, the side. No, the cross pick. Oh, he's look, you know what he's looking at? He loves these shots. He's looking at... Talk us through it, Niels. Yeah, Come on. He's looking at a bank shot safety. So he wants to bring the cue ball back about to the angle where the one is now. And then he's going to bank the two. Look at this. He plays these shots. Oh, they might have come a little short. He's trying to bank it above the nine and then over to the other corner. And he would have been behind the eight. But he doesn't have that angle now. What he does have, if I read it correctly, he's hit thin. Hit the hit the two ball into the eight and the cue ball over behind the nine. What do you think about that one, Carl? Yeah, you are you saying keep the two as close as possible to the eight, or are you just more concerned about the cue ball? I'm concerned about the cue ball here because I know the cue, the two ball is not going to do much. So if I cut it enough, the two's not doing much. I got to put all my eggs here uh, in the basket of the nine. Otherwise, I'm giving up a bank. I think he's going to try and get in behind the eight. Yeah, oh, that works. Wow. Good shot. Yeah. That was that was touchy. Fatunski's gotta go off the top rail off one rail, hasn't he? Yep. 
and you don't have to hit this hard. You could yeah. feel like I'm going to slam it, but actually, if you hit this with like a medium speed, either side of this two you're going to hit, you're going to get a safety. Yeah, full That's ball is probably the worst case scenario for Fortunski in this shot. Absolutely. As Neil says, speed is key. And delivering the cue, because sometimes you can put a bit of unwanted spin on this shot, and that would obviously take the cue ball on a different path. So let's see where this one goes. I think see, he's there's hit it that good. split. Yep. Oh, he's hit this he's tremendous. Hit it. Unbelievable. Wow, what a shot he's played there. Oh. Sorry, Niels, but that was a phenomenal shot. Yeah. The speed on that one was superb. And the eight is in the way for Mark to go off the side rail and hit it. He has to go one rail and there is just not much that can, can he go make? right. That's why he's blasting at it, hoping for some momentum. Nine ball! You the nine ball! Him. He's got him! <laughs> I have seen it all! He's fluked the nine for his first win! Oh my oh, well, god! Oh, what a match! That is unbelievable. Niels, go and give your man a hug. He's won the match 5-4. <laughs> he wins his first point. Look at this for a shot. How could you not call this shot, Niels? <laughs> Look at this. This is unbelievable. What a wreck. What a, le what a last few wrecks we've seen here. I have seen it all. Guys, we'll be back shortly after the break where Mark Bicebos will be back to play. Christina, to catch.